Many people are talking about how good the front seven can be. Many people. You are locked on Ole Miss. Your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hi, I'm Stephen Willis, a former staff member at Ole Miss and a 10-year veteran member of the national media with Yahoo Sports. Today on the show, we talk about the Ole Miss front seven and how good they could be for Ole Miss's defense. And we ask around to some of the friends of the program to make sure I'm not being too homery, whatever that means. Matt Zenitz of 24-7 Sports has logged a crystal ball for Henry Parrish to return to Ole Miss. And we talk about what that means. And Zach Barry on On3 is predicted a super athlete is going to be Ole Miss bound. And we talk to you about this Percy Harvin-like player. This is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're free and available on all the podcast apps and on YouTube. Thank you for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen every day and a special hello to the everydayers who make the show what it is. All right. So let's get started about the front seven. We have a lot of things to talk about about this front seven unit. And we had John making Gillespie on the show yesterday. And he mentioned the number one storyline that he is hearing through his sources in the grapevine is about this front seven and how it has a chance to be elite or super. They mentioned all the times that in team drill that sacks are being called out because they're able to get back to the quarterback. Now, that isn't a problem with the offensive line, it's just that this defensive line unit is really, really good. We've already had the think pieces and stories that have surrounded the Ole Miss football program about will the Ole Miss offensive line be elite and good because of how good this defensive line is. If you're going against this unit every day in practice, how good will you be when you go up against lesser competition in the fall? That is an interesting question. And this front seven is interesting. If you just look at the, the, I don't know, assumed starters, it's not even really a depth chart or anything like that. But Prince Liam Ami Ellen is, he's the dude. He's been showing out so far in this camp. He is a top 10 level pass rusher. And when you talk about Brandon Olson, who is the host of Locked On Gators, he said, hey, this guy is probably about to get in the portal. You should pay attention to him. And also, this is a guy that I legitimately thought was going to the NFL draft, not transferring. This was a surprise. He is a NFL top 40 level talent right now. He is a guy that in this one year, he's hoping to get the sack numbers up to around 10. He's hoping to have a Will Anderson type impact and hopefully getting into the first round. This was a play for him to go one more year to, to get in the first round. And he is a guy that we know can be effective from the edge. He's one of the probably at a minimum top 10 edge players in the country. He might be the best pass rusher overall. You have Walter Nolan, who is the former number one transfer portal target, number one player in recruiting. He's a guy that was originally from Olive Branch, moved to like East Tennessee, Everybody thought he was going to go to the Vols. He ended up at Texas A&M. Really good football player as well. Everybody's familiar with Jared Ivey. Everybody's um, familiar with J.J. Pegues as a front four unit. That's kind of the assumed unit. You know, the, there's some really good players. Now, now, at the linebacker position, we always talk about a front seven. The, well, in this case, is actually probably a front six, but, you know, I digress. You have a situation where Chris Poupal has a chance to be an absolute quarterback of this defense, an absolute quarterback of this defense. And whenever you look at like, whenever I ask questions about to some of the friends of the program called Michael Katz, he said, I think the front itself is great, but I still need to fill out the linebackers. And that is interesting stuff because there's not been a lot of practice access for the beat riders. I think there's been one or two practices, they've had 30 or 45 minutes to where they have time to look at all the different positions. I think it's interesting that the front, it draws the eye. It draws the focus of the Ole Miss team. 
and the linebackers still need a little work. Now, Poupal, Poupal has a chance to be really good. He has a chance to be the quarterback of that defense. Ole Miss's defense, whenever you look at really good defenses of the past in Ole Miss history, it was 2014 that led the nation in scoring defense. They had DT Shackelford manning the middle of the field at linebacker. In 1992, you had Dwayne Dotson, quarterback in that defense. You also had Cassius Beware and Abdul Jackson and those guys. But Dwayne Dotson was that mainstay in the middle of the field. Ironically enough, Zach Arnett, who is an analyst on Ole Miss's football team, is from the Jolie Dunn tree. So a lot of the stuff that they did with Abdul Jackson, with Dwayne Dotson, with Cassius Ware, you're going to see some of those principles being brought in. He's a 3-3 stack type guy. Pete Golding is a four-man front type defense type guy. So we'll see how they meld those two schemes together. I'm really interesting about that. But when you look at the modern eras of Ole Miss's defense, there's 92 that's obviously they were the national lead of that. But the difference between 1992 and now is offensive football is so much better. All the rules are skewed towards offensive football. Everything is designed for points in offensive football. That 92 team, it wouldn't give up that little yards, that little points as it is now, as it does now. If it existed at this point, it just wouldn't do that. So we'll see what the defense looks like. When you have a front seven like that, a front four especially, there's a chance for this unit to be pretty special. Um, for Ole Miss. Now, we talked to Chris Gordy from Locked On SEC. He said Ole Miss's front seven looks awesome. They may be one of the best defensive fronts in the SEC, and if you're the best defensive front in the SEC, you're the best defensive front in the country. It's going to be really interesting to think about what can happen. Now, Chris is um, a host of a radio show also from Houston, so his knowledge is going to be off of Walter Nolan. That's going to be the primary knowledge of the transfer portal. He knows about Prince Liamon Mielin because Brandon Olson, let's just say, is one of the louder members of the SEC Locked On family. But being that close to Houston, Walter Nolan is going to be known to a host of Locked On SEC and a radio show in Houston. Now you have a situation where it has a chance to be really explosive in the middle of the field. And those are going to take up double teams that J.J. Pegues and Jared Ivey would normally have gotten. So those two players are going to start getting some one-on-ones. You have to look at pass rush, NASCAR-type packages that Ole Miss might build up with this team. We've seen video of Suntaren Perkins and T.J. Dudley playing with the defensive line. What does that mean? What, what could it mean? Um, I, I speculate, I assume that it has to do with some sort of a NASCAR package to where you get on the field and like Jared Ivey and Princely Amon Ellen, they're playing on the inside and the outside of the defense is Suntaren Perkins and TJ Dudley. And when it's time just to get after the quarterback, that is interesting indeed. We talked to David Eckert from the Clarion Ledger the Ole Miss beat writer from the Jackson Clearing Ledger, he said, anything t- shy of a top five in both phases would be a disappointment. And normally you would think of you know, a top five, if you go back in time far enough, that's half of the SEC, but a top five when it comes to the 16-team SEC with Texas and Oklahoma that is going to exist in 2024, that's saying you're going to be better than a top third of the league type defense and I think that is I think that's a good landing spot I think anything shy of a top five um yeah it would be a major disappointment if you want to look at the defensive players Ole Miss was top seven or so in the league in the SEC a year ago they were top half and that defense wasn't near as good as what this defense could be all of the beat writers they're all hearing about how this front seven could be special. It could be elite. You hear those type phrases. Now, how Pete Golding is going to use those pieces, how Lane Kiffin is going to set up those pieces, is is Ole Miss going to play slower offensively? The answer to that is no. But, you know, theoretically, to protect that defense, how would that look as well? There's a lot of stuff that I'm thinking of, of how 
this defensive front seven can be used. Now, that tells me how important the pass coverage aspect of this defense is going to be. How, how much of a quick coverage unit, pass defense, how it's going to be important for the Ole Miss defense. Prince Lee Mommy Ellen is going to make it to where the uh, opposing team quarterback has to get rid of the ball in a hurry. Passes have to come out quickly. Receivers running quick routes. Or they're running quick goes or fades or something like that where you throw them downfield. Where, where you're kind of ducking and chucking. What will the defense look like against that? Because the front seven can be really, really good. If the other team can do that and get away with it consistently, you're not going to have a very good defense. I don't think that that's going to be a problem. I think with Trey Amos, I, I, at least half the field is set up. It's like Amos Island over there. And then you have Chris Graves and Amorium Walker and maybe Cedric Beavers lined up on the other side as somebody that can physical up and get it done. Like Cedric Beavers is over a six-foot cornerback. Amorian Walker is over a six-foot cornerback. I think Chris Graves is 6'1 or 6'2 as well. So you think they're going to be able to physical up against whoever they're playing. And then if you look at the safeties on this defense, Yam Banks, Key Lawrence, Lewis Moore, Trey Washington, Jaden Kennedy, um, John Saunders. This defense is in really good position to take a step in 2024. A large portion of how far this team goes in the playoffs or if they make it to the playoffs will depend on this defense, and it'll be led by that front seven and potentially Pupal as a quarterback of the defense. I think everybody should keep an eye out for that as well. Anyway, thanks again for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen of the day. Henry Parrish is really close to returning to Ole Miss, if you want to believe what 24-7 sports says, and I do. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has all the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to the professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all of that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many qualified candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats, they might not have the time or resources to hire. It's just like hiring a college football coach. If you hire the right guy, he'll have you on the edge of the college football playoff in a relatively quick order. But if you hire the wrong coach, you're going to be hiring again in three years. The difference is in the real world, you'll be hiring again in three weeks. So they even just launched a new feature that helps you write job descriptions that make the process even easier and quicker. 2.5 small businesses using LinkedIn for hiring can't be wrong. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on TV all day and have to, had to turn down the volume because of all the shouting? They are just constantly just yelling at each other. Well, make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every single day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming on YouTube or on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every single day. All right, so we talked yesterday about a Kylan Deer and how important of a role that would be, which a Kylan Deer committing early that lets you know that Ole Miss is likely not going to take a multi-year transfer this year. They're just not. You have Kedrick Riesano and you have a Kylan Deer that is ready to take over next year, but Ole Miss still needs depth for this year. You have Kedrick Riesano who 
what say what you want to say about him and all the talent is it is just unrealized talent at this point. So just in case it doesn't translate, it doesn't show up when the lights come on, you still need some bodies. And you have Ulysses Bentley, the fourth, who is an excellent plus Jerry and Ely type running back. You still need that third back. You have Logan Diggs. He has an ACL. We all know that that is potentially an 18 month injury. Some people make it back quicker than that, but you are not yourself the whole calendar year after an ACL surgery. That's just the way it is. Some people can come back. Some people can do some stuff. Even them, they will not be completely at peak performance. So Ole Miss needs another back. So we're looking for transfer portal type backs. And I said multiple times that Ole Miss needed a Henry Parrish type running back. And what I meant by that was the 2020-2021 season to where he was kind of the sandwich back in between Snoop Connor and Jerry and Ely. You need somebody to take some carries to make it a little bit easier. And Henry Parrish has He's going to go into the portal. Now, Henry Parrish famously, two years ago, when Kevin Smith went down to the U, coaching at Miami, took the job. Henry Parrish followed Kevin Smith down there. Henry Parrish has led Miami in rushing, I think, two years. He's a good little reliable running back, 5'10", 183 pounds. He runs really hard. Um, He's probably a little bit bigger than that after he's been in the weight room a couple of years. But He is a guy that you need to pay attention to. He can take some carries up. He means that Ulysses Bentley does not have to be a 20 carry a game back. He can be a 12 to 15 carry a game back. And we have Kedrick Reesonow who can be a 10 carry a game back. And then Henry Parrish comes in for 10 to 12 carries as well. And you're set with a running back that old school was getting 35, 40 carries a game. Now you are dividing them up over three running backs. They have more tread left on the tire, and your offense gets a running threat that they had back with Matt Corral, Henry Parrish, Jerry Neely, and Snoop Connor. that's a little bit different that can help Jackson Dart out. We'll see how this goes. I, I am a huge, huge fan of Henry Parrish coming back to Oxford. I was a fan of Henry Parrish when he was here the first time, but what this is going to do to Ole Miss's offense is, A, it's going to keep running backs fresh. It's going to allow Kevin Smith to do his preferred substitution pattern, go back to 2020 and 2021 to see exactly what that looks like. And it's going to make it to where Jackson Dart has different toys in his toy box depending on who's in the game. If Ulysses Bentley is in, you're going to see a lot more outside zone type stuff. If Kedrick Reesono is in the game, it's going to be more inside zone specific. And then the counter game happens with Henry Parrish. Because Henry Parrish, if everybody remembers, ran the counter, just mwah, chef's kiss. Absolutely fantastic when he was in Oxford the first time. Now, you had a guy that was excellent blocking as well, because if we all remember, Matt Corral was a quarterback runner. Jackson Dart's going to run the ball as well as that, but lead draws with the quarterback. That comes back in the system of somebody with Henry Parrish. You're, you're okay doing that. You might not want with a Ulysses Bentley because of size, and you don't know for sure exactly where you sit with Kedrick Reesono. It's a chance that you can make your run game function a little bit better. Now, this is also going to help out the pass game because we have talked for months about how Ole Miss is likely the top wide receiver room in the entire country. And I mean, some people are going to say Ohio State. Some people are going to say some other things. That's fine. That that doesn't matter to me um, because the reality of it is, is Trey Harris is probably the best wide receiver in the country. And then last year, Juice Wells would have been competing with Trey Harris for the best wide receiver in the SEC. I obviously added Malik Neighbors and all that as well. But those players are coming back. Jackson Dart has a rapport with them. You look at, Jordan Watkins, who's Mr. Reliable, Caden Priestcorn, who has a chance to be healthy for the first time with a Jordan Watkins. When the season begins, you get J- Daquan Wright, Aiden Williams, those guys, Caden Lee, who has a chance, who's been a really a revelation of spring football this year, is Caden Lee in the middle of the field. I'm telling you, Jordan Watkins and Caden Lee is c- kind of a special situation. Then add in a real white. I think it's going to allow... 
Juice Wells, whenever he's going to line up outside, and he's a luxury player because these other players that are coming on so much. John Macon Gillespie talked yesterday about hearing a good bit of stuff about Aiden Williams kind of cross-training amongst positions, which that is a lot of the spring practice time. That's what it's for. It's about player development. It's about finding out comfort level. It's about finding personnel groupings that work. Remember the movie Miracle where, you know, they were sitting there practicing, getting ready for their game in the 80 Olympics or whatever. And one of the lines they called the Conehead line that just kind of accidentally came together. They started playing pretty well and they just became known as that Conehead unit because that line, the, this wide receiver unit is in the process of filling out and finding those players as well. Really, really interesting stuff, and I'm pretty fired up about what that can be. And getting a running back like Henry Parrish back and getting those running game as good as it can be without getting a player that can step on the toes of a Kylan Deer, step on the toes of a Kedrick Reesono, because you already have a Logan Diggs that is lining up to be the number one. If you look at the three backs next year, Next year could look more like 2022 than any year that Lane Kiffin's been at Ole Miss besides 2022 because the running back room is going to be that explosive for Ole Miss next year. So we'll see exactly how that goes. Still more to come on Locked On Ole Miss, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. An on three prediction was just put in for a Percy Harvin type player. We will show you exactly what we mean. You know, passion, drive, and patience, the formula for winning champions, is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. And with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, Your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because at eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need and the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay's guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. Thanks for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen of the day and shout out to the everydayers. Locked On has launched the first ever 24-7 national streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows that cover every single league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available for free on the Fire TV channels app. Be part of history. Now, it's important to know that the next player that we're going to mention is probably not being recruited as a running back, but that's what he played at Germantown High School. His name is Jamarian Morrow. He is a super athlete type player. He's five foot nine, 185 pounds. He is essentially Elijah Moore, okay? He's a Percy Harvin type recruit, but he is essentially Elijah Moore. And and the reason I let you know is whenever you look at his highlights um, after this is over, you can have a situation where you see he has phone booth level moves. He has excellent hands and he is honestly a prototypical slot type wide receiver. He runs jets. He They line him up all over the field wherever he is because like I said, being a Percy Harvin type recruit means he's a Percy Harvin like high school player. Now, The problem with that is, and I do realize that Percy Harvin was the number one recruit in the country. I get that. But you need to understand how he is being used at Germantown in Tennessee. Like I said, he's five foot nine, 185 pounds. He's got phone booth quickness, and they do line him up all over the place. The object of the game is to get the ball in his hand as much as possible. He's a guy that never comes off the field. He's very Suntarian Perkins 
in that respect. Now, when if you look at the highlights of it, you can see all of this stuff right off. He is going to line up at running back. He is going to do that stuff. His lateral movement sideways is breathtakingly good. And like I said, an Elijah Moore type running back slash wide receiver. They use him in the pass game. They use him um, in the jet game. And it's a situation where he is the best football player on the field pretty much no matter who they're playing. And that's in ten- in Tennessee at Germantown High School. That means he's probably playing some public school ball against, I don't know, Ravenwood, against Brentwood High, um, to where there's some really good teams showing up that you have to show up for. You know, you get the, I don't know, if they play MUW, uh, they, they might have that game scheduled because sometimes there's a private public matchup in high school football. But the competition, he is never – not the best player on the football field. And whenever you see him catch the ball, it's natural. His ball skills are absolutely fantastic. You add that with his foam to booth type ability and the ability with the ball in his hand means that this is going to be a special level player. It's not going to affect a Colin Deer at all before anybody asks about that because they honestly play different type positions. It's a situation to where Jamarian Morrow is going to line up and they're going to Swiss Army knife him in the offense. They're going to, it's going to allow, and I know in basketball, this is the whole trend right now, positionless basketball. You hear that? Well, this is the type player that allows you to take your personnel grouping, the normal 11 type personnel that's one back, one tight end in your offense, and line them up in unexpected places. You have Jamarian Morrow that's going to line up at running back. Maybe a Colin Deer is out in the slot. Um, a tight end, like the tight end Hudson Wolf or Daquan Wright, is lined up on the outside as well to where the defense can't get a grasp on where you're going to attack because just because it's 11 personnel doesn't mean they're going to line up in the same place every time. This is the type of player that allows you to do that. We've all seen what Lane Kiffin can do with one year with an Elijah Moore type football player. Imagine him with three. This is a person that does an excellent job of scheming players. I can imagine that there's no real way unless there's a bad pass to stop a third and two with that player on the field. It probably means he's going to take a double team and open up other players within the offense. Offense gets a whole lot easier with a player like this on your team. He simply is a nightmare for the defense. You don't know where he's going to line up. You don't know how he's going to hurt you. You just know that he is going to hurt you. It is the 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 statement of inevitability that comes with a player like Jamarian Morrow cannot be overstated. And Ole Miss has a chance to be really good anyway. If you look at their wide receiver unit and the quarterbacks that they already have, it's interesting. Now, Jamarian Morrow, this is the comp that I'm going to give you that nobody else will give you. And that comp is Jalen Waddell. Jalen Waddell was recruited to Alabama by Lane Kiffin. This is a type player that is explosive, that makes that whole offense better. I've called Austin Simmons, Tua with four more inches. I've called Walker Howard, the silent assassin. They both have a chance to win this job. Just because I don't talk about Walker Howard all the time, it just means that I don't hear much about Walker Howard because he just does his job. Every time you see a video of Walker Howard, he is making unbelievable plays. He's just not the two-sport star that everybody's talking about. So we all hear about Austin Simmons. So don't think this quarterback competition is over by any stretch of the imagination going into 2025. But a player like Jamarian Morrow, he's going to determine who potentially is going to be the starting quarterback in 2025. This offense has a chance to be really special, and I'm interested to see exactly how it will look. Anyway, thank you for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen. We have the most perspectives surrounding spring practice, and it's no wonder that it's one of the many reasons we're the number one Ole Miss podcast, and thank you for that. But for your second listen, check out Locked On Sports Today. 
It's launched their first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows that cover every single league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the free Fire TV channels app. For those of you on YouTube, we'll send you there right now. Hotty toddy, everyone.